Hi everyone, I'm Derek with CoreOS, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Rocket's Stage 1s to pick which isolation model makes the most sense for your application. Rocket has multiple stages it goes through to run an application. First is the Stage 0. This is the binary in your path just named Rocket. It handles things like command line parsing, fetching and verifying images, managing the image store, fetching any dependencies that need to be grabbed, rend rendering images on disk, and when it comes time to finally run your application, it'll exec, exec the stage one. The stage one is what's responsible for setting up an application's isolation, which is by default done with Linux namespaces. It will also do things like setting up any relevant networking or any mounts that are needed for the application. And once the isolation is all set up, it'll exec the stage two. The stage two is user provided. That's your app. This model allows us to make the stage one swappable there are different implementations with different trade-offs, and you can pick which one makes the most sense for your app. There are four stage ones provided with Rocket. The first two are called CoreOS and Host, and for those of you familiar with Linux namespaces, these do exactly what you'd, you'd expect. They use the change root syscall and Linux namespaces to isolate your application, and this is the common definition of how containers are implemented on Linux. The PID namespace will prevent your application from seeing other processes on the host, the network namespace will give your application its own network stack, the mount namespace will your application have its own mounts, and so on. This default model isn't always appropriate for every application, however. What if we wanted to run something like the Kubernetes kubelet that needs to manage network interfaces and mounts on the host, and we wanted to run it inside of Rocket so we could have it in a consistent environment? Well, for that we have the fly stage one. This stage one will only use the change root syscall and not use any namespaces to isolate your application. This lets your application interact with and manage resources on the host machine. Alternatively, what if the default stage ones aren't secure enough? Perhaps we're running some legacy application with a poor enough security model that we don't even want it sharing a kernel with the rest of the applications on our host. For this, we have the KVM stage one. This stage one, uh, as opposed to the Fly, which has a lighter security model than the defaults, has a heavier one. It will start up a new KVM process with its own separate Linux kernel and use the container image as the file system for this new virtual machine. Thus, your application is running in an entirely new Linux VM that's managed by Rocket the same way as Rocket manages the rest of your applications. Let's see this in action. Here, I have three shells, each about to run an interactive Alpine container with Rocket. The first one runs Alpine without any additional flags, so it'll use the default stage one. This will use Linux namespaces, and the application will be isolated from the rest of the host. The second container uses the fly stage one, so it will be able to see the rest of the processes on the host. And the third container uses the KVM stage one. So it'll have an entirely separate kernel from the host and run it in its own virtual machine. And now if I go and start all these containers, and let's run psox to see what processes the containers can see. The first one just has systemd in the shell inside of it. It's running on the host. But it only, but it's inside of its own PID namespace. And the second one can see all of the processes on the host. So notably, we can even see the other container that's running. So here's the KVM uh, container that's running, and somewhere in here, yeah, here's the uh, def default stage one uh, Alpine container that's running. And finally, if we go and look at the processes in the KVM uh, image we can see that this is an entirely different set of processes from the, from the other two. The reason that there are far more processes in here than the default stage one is there's a lot more processes that are needed in an actually running system. Now let's check that the kernel is different between the KVM image and the other two containers. So we can use uname to look at the kernel information. So we see that the KVM image has a uh, kernel that is named rocket and it's running uh, 4.3. And if we do the same in the other two, we can see that they're both running a, a 4.7 kernel that was built for CoreOS. If you have any more questions on this, feel free to check out our documentation on GitHub or hop in pound CoreOS on Freenode to chat. Thanks for listening.